Reef TVM's coming at you with building the barn lean for the horses and the cattle. Um, decided to build it uh, not on skids like we did our previous ones. Um, you're certainly welcome to check out those videos. I'll put the link at the top. We have kind of a corner section in this field, um, and we're going to walk up the hill here. I'll show you from the top of the barn hill. But this little corner section is kind of a wasted space anyways, and I decided to make a great spot to put a lean in. See, it's right down here on the bottom. If we put a lean in there, there's no sense really to put it on skids because the lean is actually going to be outside the fence area. So off the Menards to get supplies, um, these are the um, you know 8-inch tubes, and uh, they're about, oh, I don't know, 4 feet plus long. And then we got uh, bags of concrete, 25 of them. We got some rebar and some nice um, stainless steel plates to, to set the posts on. Uh, started picking up supplies, realized the ground wasn't real level, so got the skid steer in here and kind of dug it out a little bit. That'll give us a little playroom when we set the posts in to be able to work. And it also gives us a little bit of ability to fill this with gravel when we're done. And that'll help with drainage and stuff. Digging the holes was absolutely no fun, folks. Uh, don't know what to say. Um, I'll leave you a list of supplies that we used on the whole project here. The ground up here is pretty much clay, and it's not easy to work with. So digging four and a half feet deep, ugh, what a joy. But we did get there. Um, it just took some time. I could have used an auger, but I didn't want an oversized hole. I kind of wanted these holes compact and tight for the tubing. This clay tends to move a little bit, so I just kind of really wanted to set it. Once I got the holes done, just using 2x4s here and some basic string method with some rebar to kind of anchor it in, to line everything up and kind of set my heights. I was really trying to get it as absolutely level as possible prior to starting. I found in the past that if you can set your tubes in, get your concrete in, get your concrete anchors set all at the right height, Ugh, it just makes everything else go easier from steel to purlins and rafters and joists, everything. It just it just makes it go up. These um, you know, anchor legs that you can buy from Menards are pretty nice. Just drop them in the concrete. We let the concrete sit for a week, get nice and hard, put your steel plate on top, bolt it down onto this. You're pretty much ready to put in the posts. In this case, we're gonna set, you know, a pretty good sized post. We're gonna set a six by six on each one of these, so there's five of those. Should be plenty strong to hold this beast up. Then we're going to take green treated, um, you know, uh, uh, two by tens, and uh, we're going to go across the front and the back. We're going to put numerous ones together to span the distance. Not a lot of load on this other than snow. The roof itself is not very heavy uh, at all. This is basically what it looks like while we let it dry for about a week. As you can see, we haven't taken the fence down there in the front yet. But we will. We'll cut that out, and uh, then we'll be ready to build this in about a week. So there's a little bit of lag between this and when we actually start the building. You know, then we went and got the lumber during that week. We got the two by ten by twenties. Uh, we got you know two by eights. We had six by sixes. Uh, we got a, a two by um, sixes in green for the bottom edge. Um, you know, we went out and bought screws, and particularly I wanted to screw the whole thing together, so we got ones that were all good for treated, 3-inch and 1-inch. And then the morning of the build arrives. Probably could have built this all in one day if we had enough guys, but we weren't going to kill ourselves. So we did this over a couple-day period. Posts went up great. They go right onto those stainless steel bases that are screwed onto those um, footings. And then um, from there, we notched the top of them. The front posts are 10 feet, the back posts are 8 feet, that gives us our slope, pretty easy to work with. Then we basically took our, our 20 footers and put several of them together to kind of give us the beam. We lagged, bolted, and anchored those all in. And then once we squared everything up, made sure it was level, well, then the build just kind of continued. It wasn't that hard. Obviously, you know, you get the, the sloped hangers um, to hold in your rafters and joists. And then, uh, you know, you put the, the, the purlings across the top and then, of course, the purlings on the side to hold up our steel. We just used, you know, um, constructional 2 by 4s for that and, again, screwed everything together. Pretty hot out working, but it was still good weather overall, so we had a very enjoyable time building this. Um, between us all, uh, probably a good three and a half days between footings and when we finally finished with the skid steer and backfilling and all that. But it was a fun project. 
the construction of the project uh, probably didn't require us to go as high with the 2x8s on the inside, um, but we decided to because we might be putting horses in here that are pretty tall, um, and of course we don't want them you know, chewing on it or getting stuff behind it. Obviously for cattle you wouldn't have to go this high, um, but you know, it's the way we are, just farmers with overkill I guess. The um, steel was bought from Menards. Um, it was their pro ribbed, kind of their higher end version. Um, tried to buy it in a similar color to match all our other barns, which is the classic red and white scenario. We made the trim at the bottom that it rests on white. Um, made the top J trim white, and all the gable corners are white. Uh, we're not allowing the animals to touch any of the steel sides. They can only have access to the inside and the opening from the front. So that's kind of nice. That doesn't beat the steel up that way. Um, on the roof, we did lay some foam strips on the, on the gable edges just to prevent snow from blowing in there and, you know, kind of heaving those up. As you can see, we're putting on the panels. The panels we cut with a nibbler, uh, about an $80 tool or so that we bought from Menards. We used a uh, string to kind of keep the screws um, in a really nice line. Uh, probably could have done that numerous different ways, but for us that seemed to work the best. And then on the back side, we ran a 20 foot long gutter with a downspout just to take the water off uh, the roof and get it off to the side instead of just coming down against the edge of that building because there isn't a lot of overhang. Um, on the front, there's virtually none, and on the back, there's only maybe about a two inch overhang. The getting the water out of the way just tries, you know, to keep the ground a little drier inside it. Obviously, it's not waterproof when you got, you know, a 19 plus foot opening that's 10 feet high across the front but you know it turned out pretty good we took the um, gabled edges and uh, ran the corners with them and of course ran against the top edges I really kind of trimmed it out well left the boards exposed in the front and again they're screwed on those two by tens there in the front and that'll help us so that you know if they you know, chip it or wear it we can just take them off and replace them overall the project came in budget pretty close we were budgeting about three and the whole project came in about I think it was about 2600 uh, It can't really beat that uh, for a three-day project for a shelter for animals. I do prefer these normally on skids, like I said, where I can kind of move these shelters around and fix the dirt underneath. But this one's wide enough where we can go in with the skid steer and uh, clean it out and, and uh, repair any dirt work that we need to over time. And being that it's in a corner which is outside the fence, we're not really going to be moving it and leaving an opening in the fence. So... Making this one permanent was, was the way to go. All the roof and the panels are put on with screws. Um, when you buy your panels with Menards, you can buy colored match screws, and they have the uh, washer right on them, which is great. That really helps prevent against roof leakage. We tried to build the whole entire structure with screws, so if we have to deal with repairs, hopefully it'll come apart fairly easy in the future. The... Uh, inside we decided on more of a gravelly sand mix we were considering just sand but you know over time the animals tend to sink into that a little more adding a little bit of gravel to it in a 50 50 base gonna give us a little bit more support for those animals so we like that idea we ran the hot right up to this um, and then up and across the top and then to the other side so as we finish it here we don't have the dirt work done but we'll show that in a minute you can see the the wires on and uh, we've got the sides protected, the steel's all up, and the gutter's on in the back. This was a great project, folks, that the family chipped in and our friends chipped in to help us put together. I'd highly recommend building one of these for your animals. If you build it right, this will potentially last for years. Other than maybe some dents from hail, um, this structure should really hold up for a very, very, very long time. Here you can see we've done the dirt work now with the skid steer. Got kind of a 50% sand gravel mix on the inside. And the outside, we put black dirt. Now all this is going to settle. We're going to have to come back and fix it probably in a few weeks after some rains. But the structure looks really nice, folks. Here's the gutter and the backside view, as you can see. We've got a nice slope to that gutter, so it drains real well. Um, and again, the dirt work. We'll eventually get grass to grow here. And it'll just take a little bit of time, but it'll come. I might put, you know, a little, you know, 10 or 12 inch um, gravel border around this edge just to kind of help us with weeds right up against the barn. Might make trimming and cleaning it up a little easier. But I'm going to kind of wait and see how things go um, with how it settles before I do that. 
overall it was a really great project folks um, again I'll put the video link at the top if you want to see us build a skid uh, or excuse me build a lean that's on skids that you can move around again this one you obviously can't move around this is a permanent structure on the farm for the cattle and the horses but it was a fun project to build um, I got the list of materials um, that I'll also post um, in the comments so that you can see it there too if you'd like to, to build one of these on your own um, enjoy folks thank you for watching please like or subscribe to the channel we'll keep putting out great videos like this